Hello everybody and welcome. I'm Wesley Payne, Director of the Parthenon. I'm delighted to welcome you to our virtual opening reception for our new exhibit, We Have a Vision, Nashville Women from the Centennial to Suffrage, in which we'll focus on four particular women as sort of examples of all the women who worked both at the Centennial Exposition and for women's suffrage. Before I go on, I want to thank in particular um, two people or two groups of people who have um, loaned objects to us for this exhibit without which it would be, we've been hard pressed to come up with this beautiful, um, enjoyable, educational exhibit. The Bunton and Finucan families who are related to Kate Kirkman, who was the president of the Women's Department at the Centennial Exposition, and David Ewing, who is a collector and historian par excellence of all things Nashville. And he has loaned us objects. The Buttons and Finucans have loaned us clothing of the time period we are looking at. I will be ably assisted by Katie Petroli, our Director of Education, and Monica Bryant, our Registrar, in showing you what you will see when you come in person to this exhibit. In the exhibit, we look at, um, we focus on four women. Kate Kirkman, who was the president of the Women's Building at the Exposition, Kate Birch Warner, Frankie Pierce, and Ann Dallas Dudley. The first object that you see in the exhibition is this beautiful coat from the mid-1890s that belonged to Kate Kirkman. I hope that when you come in person, you'll be able to really examine this um, magnificent and in magnificent condition garment. Um, very fancy, and she was a very tiny woman. I'd like to direct your attention to some of the objects in this case. The first one is this wonderful portrait of Kate Kirkman, which came with the dresses from the Finucane and Button family. And next to it, we have this calendar, and it's actually open to the month of April, which shows the woman's building. Each month had a different building from the Centennial Exposition. And the reason I love this calendar so much is because on the bottom right, there's a quote by Alfred Lord Tennyson, one of my favorite poets. And the quote, I'll read it for you, is, the woman's cause is man's. They rise or sing together bond or free. If she be small, slight natured, miserable, how shall man grow? And I just love that because it acknowledges the importance of balance with the male counterpart while still highlighting our accomplishments and progress. And next to it we have this spoon, which is my favorite in the whole case. It was just donated to us by Mr. William Hollings. And inside the spoon, there's the facade of the woman's building, and it's encircled by these beautiful little blue enameled flowers. And on the stem, you see the words Centennial and Tennis, excuse me, the Tennessee Centennial. And on the top, the reason we were so excited about this spoon is because there's an actual bust of Kate Kirkman on the very end. Okay, a few more objects I'd like to show you in the case. This one, we have the front of sheet music. Again, we have a portrait of Kate Kirkman. And what I love about this is this drawing on the front. It shows an aerial view of the Tennessee Centennial Exposition grounds. So you'll want to spend some time with that. And above it, we have a photograph of Kate Kirkman and her own parade. And it's, she's sitting in a horse-drawn carriage covered in flowers. And if that's not baller, I don't know what is. So I'm so excited for you to come and see these in person. As we move from the decade of the 1890s and the Centennial Exposition into the first two decades of the 20th century, when the push for woman suffrage became really critical, we also have a garment that belonged to Kate Kirkman. This is a white or off-white eyelet dress, very expensive fabric. It's linen with hand cut work um, and very beautiful. Our conservator told us that it was originally made for the fashion of the 19 aughts when bodices for women's clothing were big and poofy and blousy with a wide waistband and a skirt that came down to their feet and covered their ankles. But with such a beautiful dress and such elaborate fabric, no woman with her salt would have wanted to discard such a beautiful dress. 
without at least attempting alterations to make it fit new fashions. So this dress has been altered with the fullness taken out of the bodice with tucks, um, the waistband narrowed and the skirt shortened so that it was perfectly appropriate to wear to a tee in the 19 teens. One of the most exciting and unusual objects um, in the exhibition was loaned to us by David Ewing. It is this early 20th century voting box. Um, we love to conclude the exhibit with the fact that women did get the vote and the fact that their vote might have, handwritten, been placed in a box like this. We don't believe this box was used in Nashville, but it is typical of boxes that were available. And you will notice that it has not just one lock on the front, but three locks across the back in addition, and each of the four locks has a different key. Great efforts were made to make the votes secure. After you have learned about the suffrage connections to Centennial Park and the Parthenon from the 1890s to 1920s, and you have explored the artifacts and archival images on display, we invite you to play the part of a suffragist using our suffrage sashes, and you can try them on for yourself when you visit. At various times throughout the exhibition run from July through January 13th, we will be doing a special program called Origami Suffrage Roses. We have a variety of colors of paper representing the roses that suffragists wore, yellow roses, and you will be able to make one when you come in the exhibit. And perhaps you'll choose a color for suffrage or a color that has special meaning to you, just as the roses did for the suffragists back in 1920. We also have cartoons where you can check out what was going on in the papers at the time, including um, taking a look at some of the fashion choices and how they were depicted in the newspapers. We are going to toast the passage of the 19th Amendment and the opening of this exhibit. I hope that you have a way to join us at home.